A really common chief complaint that we face in the emergency department is back pain. So in this lecture, we'll go ahead and talk about the general approach to a patient with this chief complaint. So let's go ahead and get started. Like all chief complaints, the first thing we need to do is develop a critical differential diagnosis. For back pain, this includes cauda equina, acute core compression, from a fracture, epidural abscess, epidural hematoma, and finally, abdominal aortic aneurysm. So let's go over how each one of these present. Cauda equina usually presents with saddle anesthesia and bowel or bladder incontinence or retention. The bladder incontinence occurs because the patient is no longer able to feel their bladder become distended with urine. As a result, the pressures in the bladder become so great that the patient will begin to dribble urine. Understanding that these are two signs of cauda equina, it is important for the physician to perform a rectal exam to ensure that there is intact sphincter tone, as well as to check the sensation in the saddle area. For acute cord compression, the most sensitive finding will be a sensory level cutoff. One of my favorite stories from residency had to do with a patient who presented with acute core compression from a pathologic fracture. The patient was an elderly male who had a history of prostate problems, quote unquote. He presented because he had sudden onset of urinary retention. A foley was placed to decompress his bladder. The initial assumption was that the patient had BPH and was just retaining urine. At the time of discharge, the patient also started complaining of lower extremity weakness. So the decision was to get an MRI of his spine. Now, where I trained, it was really, really, really hard to get an MRI. But somehow, the residents were able to get this patient set up with an MRI of his entire spine. This involved the blessing of neurosurgery, radiology, it involved getting county transport to take this patient across campus to the MRI center. And of course, when everything was all said and done and you returned from MRI, the MRI techs had only done L-spine imaging, which all came back negative. On the following shift, neurology was consulted, and they noted that the patient had a dense T6 sensory level cutoff. The patient went back to MRI to get imaging of his T-spine, and it was there determined that he had a pathologic fracture with compression of the spinal cord. Turned out that his prostate problems weren't BPH, but he actually had prostate cancer with metastatic lesions to his spine. This story taught me that it is always important to check the sensory status of any of my patients that present with back pain. For epidural abscess, the patient will present with fever, midline point tenderness, and a history of IV drug use. Studies have shown that these three features do not have a high enough sensitivity that you can absolutely rule out epidural abscess. But if your patient has all three of them, epidural abscess should be higher up on your differential and should necessitate a workup. Epidural hematomas will present in patients who are anticoagulated.
Keep it on your differential for patients who are on warfarin or all the new novel oral anticoagulants like dabigatran and apixaban. And finally, we have our patient with AAA. These are going to be your older patients who are hypotensive and maybe have a pulsatile mass in their abdomen. Remember, the aorta is a retroperitoneal structure. As a result, it'll present with back pain instead of the classic guarding, rebound, and rigidity that we see with processes that cause peritonitis like appendicitis and diverticulitis. For the workup, if you're considering any of the critical differential diagnoses such as cauda equina, acute cord compression from pathologic fracture or traumatic fracture, epidural abscess, or epidural hematoma, you should jump straight to an MRI if possible. For any elderly patient that comes into the emergency department with back pain, you should do a bedside ultrasound of the aorta to ensure that they're not having a AAA rupture. So it's really important to remember your critical differential diagnosis when you're constructing your presentation for your attending. You want to mention whether or not your patient is having saddle anesthesia or bowel or bladder incontinence or retention. You want to mention whether or not your patient had a sensory level cutoff on your physical exam. You'll want to mention whether or not your patient is having any weight loss as this may represent malignancy and put your patient at increased risk of having a pathologic fracture with acute cord compression. You want to mention whether or not your patient is having fever, point tenderness on exam, and in this case, you want to ensure that you actually go into the social history and discuss whether or not the patient is an IV drug user. You want to review the patient's med list and report whether or not the patient is anticoagulated. You want to describe your abdominal exam and whether or not you actually felt a pulsatile mass. So let's say you complete your assessment of your patient and you've determined that they do not have any of the diagnoses on your critical differential. You've determined that the patient has a relatively benign cause for their symptoms, and as a result, you can start treating them. The two main weapons that we have against back pain are NSAIDs and muscle relaxers. If your patient is having a herniated disc, the disc will generally have some inflammation that will cause it to swell and as a result compress some of the peripheral nerves that come off of the spine. By giving NSAIDs, you're actually treating the underlying cause for the patient's symptoms. You'll be treating the inflammation of the disc and as a result, the decreased swelling of the disc will hopefully relieve the peripheral nerve of compression. For the second part, the compression of the peripheral nerves often leads to exquisite pain secondary to muscle spasms. By giving your patient muscle relaxers such as Flexeril or Valium, you can help them through the muscle spasms that they're experiencing as the NSAIDs kick in and the disc becomes less inflamed. Remember to be careful with muscle relaxers and the elderly patients. Muscle relaxers can make the elderly unstable on their feet, and the last thing you want to do is cause an old person to fall and break their hip. Notice on our treatment algorithm, we really don't include narcotics. Our goal is to treat the underlying cause of the pain rather than just masking it with opiates. Back pain is a really difficult and complex subject. We hope that this video serves as a good primer to assist in the initial approach and treatment of patients who come in with back pain.